Woo wee! Man, that's a sweet looking ball. I can't wait to get it. I think I messed this guy up here. I think, I think I said Karen or something. I think it's, I think it's French, man. Sharon, Sharon Archery, Sharon Archery. Laredo, Laredo. I, I'll have to ask him why uh, Laredo. Only thing I know about Laredo is like Laredo, Texas, but he's out of Arkansas. So, but I'm really looking forward to getting that bow. He said that it is super nice. So, I seen something in one of the pictures. I thought, yeah, the limb looked a little bit screwy right there. He said, no, nah, it's the picture. He said the bow is it's, it's excellent, perfect shape. So, I'm really looking forward to getting it. I should have it by uh, about the end of the week coming up. About the end of this week coming up. Um, I got a quick story to tell you guys. It might be helpful, might not, but uh, man, I was a diehard top end hunter. I'm tired. I came out here and I just worked out. I've been working out. Uh, last year I had a super Kodiak that was 50, 57 pounds at 28, and then at my draw it was 68 pounds. I'm standing by the heater, it's cold. But uh, I got done working out and I was fatigued and I grabbed the bow. I had it hanging up here. I was going to shoot after I worked out just like I just did, and uh, I went out there, I drew it, drew back, I couldn't get it drew back, I could not draw the bow back, so I'm going to take a shot with this, this is a 50 pound, I just worked out and I'm fatigued, so let's try this 1967 Red Bear, this is the Hunter, Kodiak Hunter, it's 50 pounds for me at my 31 inch drill. See what happens here. Right out of money. Right out of money. Right out of money. It's about 13 yards across the garage floor. Right out of money. But uh, say I go grab my. Let me hang this back up. Say I go grab my 70 pound Gainesville Kodiak. Fred Bear Kodiak. You know, fatigued and tired. I, I'll struggle to get it back. But uh, if I'm cold, well, the story, I was going to tell you a story. Look like they had to hit the pie. Well, they would have hit the pie right there, but I'll tell you a story. Uh, um, I was a diehard top end hunter, man. I'd always hang in there in cold weather. My motto was. Uh, if you just you're absolutely just can't take it anymore, you gotta get out. You can't take it. Stay in there 30 minutes. That was my motto. Anyway, one morning I was out hunting. I was shooting a 70 pound, I had a 70 pound recurve or not a recurve, 70 pound compound bow with a 65% let off. It was the PSE Fireflight Elite compound bow, and I heard a pickup at 9:30 a.m. It was cold. I had on a lot of clothes. And uh, 9.30 a.m. come, <clears throat> excuse me, broom, I heard a pickup fire up, and uh, well, that was adjacent leaving, he done froze out. And then, it was, it was about 10, right around 10 o'clock, I had a buddy that hunted where I hunted, he was on the other side of the property, which is about half a mile away. I caught a glimpse of him walking out at 10 o'clock, he was froze out, but me being the diehard fool I was, <clears throat> had to put my arms in there. I uh, kept hanging in there because a lot of the big bucks I killed uh, in a rut, and I'll warm up here, was after 10 o'clock, 10 30 to 11 o'clock. What they do a lot of times after the does go to bed, the big old single buck will get up and he knows their doe beds. And then that big buck will be, he'll go checking for a hot doe on the doe beds. So I always sit between where I thought bucks were bedded and where I knew some does were bedded. And I hunted late morning like that. Well, long story short, I had a 70 pound PSE fire flight and it was about 1045. I mean, you're talking, it was sub zeros out there. And uh, it was just, I mean, I would, I would hunt, my face would peel, my skin would peel from the cold. I would just, I mean, I'd just hang in there. But uh, for the life of me, here come this buck. He's 170 plus. I'm not shitting you. True story. It was about 1045. And here he come. And 
any other time I pulled that PSE back 70 pounds, no problem, and then hit my lead off a 65%, so I was only holding about 35 pounds or 30 pounds or something. But anyway, here he come, and for the life of me, I could not break the uh, wheels on that thing to the lead off. I could not get that bow back. I sat there and about cried, and then like, you, you, you know, get your ass down. And head back to the truck, you know, get warmed up or whatever. But uh, that's why you won't see me with my trad bows in cold weather. You're not going to see me going out with a heavy poundage bow. That's like this new bow. I was showing you guys this new bow. Um, it's 42 pounds at 28, so I'm thinking it'll get me right about 50 pounds. So and if it's nice and warm and sunny, you know, and I don't got to wear a lot of clothes, yeah, I may take a 70-pound bow. But I don't want to make my video too long. Hopefully, you know, that might be a little tip. It might not matter none to you. But that was a hunting story failure of a buck that came by at 15 yards right in front of me. I tried to draw back. Couldn't do it. I tried to draw back. I could not do it. And, I, and he just walked right on by me. I mean, that's just <laughs> that's the way it was. That's the only thing about real heavy poundage bows when you're pushing your poundage. If you got on a lot of clothes and you get cold, it's not going to happen, fellas. Anyway, we'll see you guys. Take care. I'll try to make some more. Uh, I'll put it on that new bow coming in. I got. I'll try to get some more videos going of some shooting here pretty soon. We'll see you guys.